Hey guys, Jeff here at the Common Sense Camper. All right, I'm going to continue my series on the lightweight backpack kit, or I guess loadout, if you will. So what I'm going to do today is I'm going to talk about first aid, and we're going to do a tabletop. I'm going to show you what I carry in regard to first aid. I would steer away from buying the pre-made ones in the store, only because what I found is 80, 90% of those uh, kits are just band-aids. What I would recommend is that you make your own and a lot of this stuff you probably already have around the house and again this is all personal your kits gonna be completely different from mine and you just gotta make your own and make it work for you. Okay well this is gonna be a footstool top I guess uh, the weather's not cooperating it's kinda dark outside so uh, hopefully this comes in pretty good view here. So from this side working this way, first and foremost is a tourniquet. Uh, for an ultralight backpacker, this will, you'll probably never find one in his pack. It's too heavy. Uh, for a bushcrafter though, this is a very lightweight item. And I feel that if, if I'm going to add some weight to my, my first aid kit, this is going to be one of them. And here's why. Yes, you can try and make a tourniquet with a stick, a paracord, or your you can try and make one with a bandana or shemog and a, you know, part of a trekking pole or a tent stake. To me, th those things are just all really ridiculous. And uh, over the years of taking first aid uh, training, I've talked to some of those guys that, that teach it, and I've asked them, hey, if I was out in the woods and I had to make a tourniquet, could I do it? They've all said, yes, you could do it, but it's not going to be a very effective. And keep in mind, if you have to perform it on yourself, you are going to be freaking out. Your, your adrenaline is just, your endorphins, everything in your body is going to be freaking out. And trying to make a tourniquet in the field, I think for me, just seems a little ridiculous. Uh, I think it's a good idea to know how to do it, it, it just in case. But I would rather carry a tourniquet. Uh, the other reason I carry a tourniquet is that's one of your biggest uh, risk exposures out in the wild because you're using saws and axes and knives and if you hit a main artery, you can bleed out and die very quickly. I mean, it happens like that. So I always keep a tourniquet in my vehicles. I keep one on my motorcycle. I also always carry one when I'm out in the woods. And you need to learn how to use it and get a good tourniquet. And like I said, it, it really doesn't weigh much. Uh, at the end of this clip here, I will show you the weight. I'll get the scale and put the weights to each one of these items. But that is, the, and I can't talk about this enough, thinking that you're going to go out and make one out of a bandana and a stick is just, it's ridiculous, especially if you're by yourself. So I would definitely put a tourniquet in all of your first aid kits. The next thing I have here is this is kind of my main uh, first aid kit. And I like to list what I have in here. Uh, because a lot of times you, you, know, you don't go to this a lot, maybe just for Advil or Imodium AD, and you kind of forget what's in here. So it's a good idea to have these listed. Another nice thing is, let's say something happens and you pass out or you're hurt, and, and you're not able to uh, give yourself first aid. It allows someone else, if you're with someone else, to go in your pack and they know exactly what you have in this first aid kit. So I have the list here. And what I keep in here, uh, and, and again, this is one of those things where I reduce my pack weight by taking it out of a, a like an, an uh, IFAC kit and, and putting it in a Ziploc. It's a lot lighter and I can see what I have in here very easily. So I have a gauze, a large gauze. Uh, this would be for uh, packing a wound that uh, is not... Uh, severe enough that would require a tourniquet, but yet it's a little bigger, uh, like maybe a large abrasion, abrasion 
uh, and it's a little bigger than just a standard band-aid so I like to keep one of those in here uh, I have a tampon there's absolutely nothing wrong with carrying one of those guys because uh, it is obviously designed you know it's cotton and it absorbs uh, 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 blood and liquids really well so if you were to gouge your arm say on a stick or uh, you know on a fence or something and it caused a, a large hole you could actually pack it with a tampon and it will stop the bleeding next thing uh, this might be a little bit of a luxury item but I like carrying this because it has a couple uh, important tools in here that I can use effectively with first aid this is a uh, tool light to tool logic uh, I used to carry this in my wallet and I just uh, recently transferred it into my first aid kit uh, it has a pair of scissors and the scissors work really well uh, you can cut tape and bandages with it I also have a uh, toothpick it's a plastic toothpick and I have used that to remove uh, splinters with before it has a pair of tweezers again very important it has a uh, file small little file in it it also has a knife a uh, very small knife. Now one thing you could use that for is you could always lash that to a stick. You could use it as a kind of a makeshift uh, frogging gig. Uh, it's pretty sharp uh, for what it is but small little knife. Uh, it has a light. It's a red light. It's kind of a kind of a joke but nonetheless it's there. And then it also has a small Phillips and flathead screwdriver. So if you're someone that wears eyeglasses you have a nice little kit here if you have to tighten up the screw to your eyeglasses and again it doesn't weigh that much I also have in here might as well just get all this stuff out of here now I have uh, q-tips in here and people ask well why do you why do you carry q-tips I have found especially uh, at work that these are great for getting things out of your eye so if you were to get something in the lower or upper lid of, of your eye uh, these are great for you, know, you open your, your lid and you can actually touch the item a lot of times it'll pick that up and get it out of your eye and uh, also obviously it's good for uh, cleaning your ears uh, you could clean a small cut with it with an alcohol swab so uh, those, I like to carry those in, in my pack. Uh, along with the Q-tips, if you do get something in your eye, that's one of the re another reason I carry a compass with a mirror. Uh, that's one thing you don't really think about in regard to first aid and being outside, is you get something in your eye, you can't see it, you don't have a mirror, it's very hard to, to get it out of there. The other thing is I, I've actually had like thorns and things stuck on my face and I, I can feel them but I can't get them out so a compass with a mirror is, is something that I would highly recommend then I have uh, these say nail polish remover they're basically just alcohol swabs I have some standard band-aids I have some uh, moleskin band-aids again more standard band-aids I have some sting relief and it's another packet of the uh, alcohol and then uh, I have some pills in here. This is just my little pill bag, and I like to label those. And, and a couple reasons is a lot of times, if you're not using this on a regular basis, you forget what all those pills are. And obviously, there's a good bit of pills in here, and you know I may forget what the Benadryl looks like or the Prilosec. Uh, the other nice thing is again, if someone else needs to use your first aid kit, they're labeled so they know what they are. So my uh, main pills that I carry on a regular basis is Benadryl uh, that helps with uh, a little bit with like bee stings or uh, if you get a reaction to something the Benadryl seems to help that I have aspirin in here uh, a lot of people don't carry aspirin I think aspirin is one of those very undervalued uh, medicines uh, Obviously, I have, I have a heart condition, so I always carry aspirin. And uh, guys that don't know or maybe don't get regular checkups 
could have a heart issue out on the trail or out camping and an aspirin could actually save your life uh, in, in a situation where you have either a, a mild heart attack uh, or chest pains, you know, something heart related and you can actually save your life by chewing up an aspirin uh, until you can get to uh, medical attention. Then I have Advil, Imodium AD, that is, a, I will always carry Imodium AD because there's nothing worse out on the trail than having an upset stomach. Then I have uh, Aleve, that's just for back aches, knee aches, anything that's a little, uh, a little more painful than what Advil can handle. And then I have Prilosec for heartburn. Now, in this bag, I, I don't know that this is necessarily really first aid, uh, but I kind of include it with the first aid group. And these are what I call gels and liquids. So I have chapstick. Uh, that's another thing that's terrible uh, when you're out is getting chapped lips. There just doesn't seem to be anything that, that solves that. So I always have chapstick. The other thing I use the chapstick for is to lubricate anything uh, or protect anything that like a, a carbon material like a like a knife or a saw or some type of blade that uh, will rust if you get it wet and it's not properly oiled you can use it uh, on a firearm as well as, as type of a temporary lubrication or uh, protect it I also have uh, I like these small uh, banana boat sunscreen. They, they're small, lightweight, compact, and uh, I'm someone that if I'm going to be out around a lot of sun, even if it's going to be 90 degrees out, I will wear a long sleeve shirt. And the reason I wear a long sleeve shirt is twofold. Number one, it keeps the sun off my arms, and number two, it keeps the bugs away. Uh, there's nothing worse than being out on a trail. It's 85, 90 degrees out, and you have sunscreen on and then the mosquitoes come out so now you're putting bug spray on too and you talk about just greasy uncomfortable smelly situation you're trying you know you're sweating and of course the sweat won't come out through the pores because you have sunscreen and bug spray caked on that's why I prefer to wear long sleeve shirts uh, get those uh, real thin workout nylon shirts uh, or polyester uh, and, and that way you don't have to worry about your arms and then all you're doing is putting sunscreen on your your face the back of your neck and maybe on the on the top of your hands and it, then you're also limiting your bug spray to those areas as well uh, I have a cork in there and I have a, a sail needle in a or a couple I actually have two sail needles in just a straw and I've just you know, pinched and burned the end, and I put tape on this end so I can get to it. So I have a, a sail needle, a large canvas sail needle, and then a cork, and that's just kind of used as a backer if I'm sewing something so I don't puncture my finger. Uh, these weigh nothing. Uh, I, I don't even think I could get it to register with grams. Uh, and again, you know, there's nothing worse than sewing something, you poke your finger, and now, you, now you're putting a band-aid on it. So I keep that in there. Then I have a blanket pen, and again, this could be used uh, for wrapping a bandage and, and, and putting a blanket pen in it to hold it. Uh, you could use it as a sling if you have like a shemog and you've sprained or maybe you thought you broke your arm or your shoulder hurts and you put a sling on, you can use a blanket pen to hold that together. Uh, you can pin your pants back together if the, if the button blows out of it. Uh, I've also used it on occasion in cold weather where I have a wool blanket and I just want to pin that around my chest to keep it on. I have a silicone tent sealer. That's in case I poke a hole in my uh, tent or my tarp. And then I also have, uh, that's about, I want to say it's about five feet of Gorilla Tape. Uh, and again, that can be used as a repair kit. You can start a fire with that by shredding it up into little pieces. Uh, and you can also use it as uh, uh, a covering for uh, a bandage. So 
this is what I carry again you know this is just to give you uh, some suggestions some ideas of uh, something that would work really well out in the field so I'm gonna put all this back together uh, put it on a scale and give you some uh, weights to it okay so here are the weights now for my first aid kit which is the bandages and the pills and everything I'm gonna weigh this uh, separately because I realize this is probably something that a lot of people are not gonna carry or they may just put like fingernail clippers a small pair of scissors so I'm gonna weigh this sep separately because it is probably the heaviest part of this whole kit so uh, the bandage and pill kit is coming in at 43 grams or 1.5 ounces the tool logic is coming in at 1.2 ounces or 34 grams is coming in at 83 grams or 2.9 ounces and then my liquid and gel kit is coming in at 3.4 ounces or 95 grams so there you go guys hopefully this has been helpful this is Jeff with the common sense camper camping out